right now. Yeah, we're good to Hello go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the podcast. Um, we are Diverse Beats, and we are so happy to be back. So thank you very much for having us. And if you didn't check out the last video, then please do head over to our YouTube channel, like and subscribe. We just did a meet and greet and got to know each other a bit better um, and let you guys know us a bit better. So that was really fun. Uh, this week, we are going to be doing branding. So we did touch on it briefly last week, but we thought it was really, really important to uh, be able to give you something a bit more in depth, kind of talk about what branding is, why it's important, because it is detrimental to an artist's success. So grab me a cup of tea and let's go on with it. So uh, Michael, let's start with you, I guess. Um, what is branding to you and, and why is it important? Interesting question, because um, when I started music, I was firstly a rapper. So um, as a rapper and as someone that writes songs and and people like that, like mainly coming from like a grime background, people would have like little slogans and little one-liners, what they would say, yeah, that you would associate them with. Sometimes it could even be a sound effect, something as, as silly as that, you know, but we'd associate that with them. So yeah. that could be part of your brand and how people recognize you or come to recognize you, or maybe the only thing they'd recognize you by, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like ad libs, um, the way you dress, the way you look, um, your genre's choice, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, just your overall style, how you how you choose to go about things that can make you unique and separate you from someone can be, yeah, put into the concept of branding. For me, that's me personally. So yeah. I'd, I'd go with that. That is true. No, absolutely. I think I would. I would definitely agree. Um, for me, a brand is is your identity, and and so many different elements go into that. Um, you know, as you quite rightly said, it can be image, it can be um, personality. It's not, it doesn't just have to be visual. It can be, you know, take Lewis Capaldi, for example, he, his brand is just being funny and, and, you know, he is well known for his musical course, but he's known to, to be engaging and people are really buying into that, which I think mm -hmm. is really important and uh, interesting. Uh, obviously it shows how the industry is ever growing, but it's also things like live performance. You obviously have your brand and then you have to it's really important that you connect everything together and you bring it to the stage you bring it on your socials you bring it in just your everyday life um yeah. so no I would completely agree with everything you said uh Sir Hat, what what do you think uh, first of all I would like to welcome everybody for the second episode of our um, um, podcast um thank you for joining us um as for branding obviously just like Michael and you said Nicole um Branding actually is, is, in my opinion, the key element to an artist's success, right? Um, having said that, it's, it's one of the most um, overlooked um, topics in majority of the artist's um, career. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it often starts like, branding, yeah, it's, it's fine. I'll get back to that. You know, uh, as long as my music sounds cool, I'm all right with the branding. You know, my music will bring in the... Um, crowd in today's world that's not how it works with the mm -hmm. with in this day and age that is ex absolutely not how it works um the pe people who overlook branding are the ones who are failing and yeah fair enough some artists actually have made it without without branding their their, their, mu mm -hmm. their, their music was really good and the, the music that they're produ the produced they're manufactured did take them to places and that's a fact but that's like um, one in a uh, million, honestly. I'm not even exaggerating. This is mm -hmm. serious. So obviously, um, branding, back to, back to the topic, branding is really, really important. And it could be with, um, just like Michael said, the way you dress, the way you present yourself. Um, it, it, mm -hmm. Very simple and a very key element to your branding is your logo. And when you release a song on the cover, um, that's the cover... Bottom, uh, bottom right corner, your logo, or bottom left corner, your logo, somewhere your logo. So when 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 people see your logo, all right, they associate that with you. They're like, oh, cool, you know, it, they know the name. But when you see when they see your logo on an album, obviously they know it's your album. But when you when they see your logo on um on a piece of flyer or a banner, you know, on a festival banner, massive oh, that some because often, um the flyers of uh, festivals and um, because they have they have a massive lineup 
they don't write the names and they just put the logos there. So mm -hmm. you get you get mm -hmm. to you get to know you get to know the, the lineup by looking at the um, by looking at the logos and identifying through the logos or who's going to be joining. You, know, you see what I mean? So branding mm -hmm. is actually a very, very key point in the success rate of an artist. That's my opinion, obviously. Yeah, no, absolutely. Jess, what do you think? Um, yeah, I think so much has been covered already that I, I do fully agree with. I think coming from a more critical perspective, I think branding is almost like the compressed perception of yourself. It's it's how you, you know, create relationships with the audience because the audience are only just seeing you at face value. They don't know you as well as you know you. Mm -hmm. They're only seeing what you put out to the world. And what you put out is so, so crucial to your strategic success. You know, it's all about consistency. You've got to, you've got to form that trust with um listeners and people who are watching you so that they can trust you and build that relationship with you to support you and your music and I think that starts with branding for sure Definitely. yeah I love that absolutely yeah. and would you guys say that it's genre specific would you say that um your brand has to tie in with your genre or do you think just kind of over time you you know people say you are what you listen to or you are what you eat if you like um would you say your brand kind of comes with the genre that, of music that you do or would you say it's specific to each um individual um uh, oh no, you, i'd you, say you, personally <laughs> sorry i would say if you are solely following trends within your genre you will fail because trends die as soon as they come about you know you have to have your own individual take yes take um, small snippets from the genre and things which you know tell people that you are from that genre but you have to have your own take on it for sure yeah definitely yeah um, I definitely agree with that as well um, Jessica touched a very nice point there because um, that although the trends and the genres come and go that's a fact um, and every day as you can see there there, there are um, you know this house and that house and you know vice versa this drum and bass that drum and bass. a lot of um side sub genres coming out and some of them are not even being heard but um however the, the 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 main compartments the main genres are always there so the house house music it, it's been coming since the um disco genre this disco era you know late 70s uh, 70s and late 70s and from from that era it, it emerged and it turned into house 80s and whatnot and then now we are we are in 2020 and 2021 and the house is still here it only progressed mm -hmm. it only um uh, developed into different genres as well it's got it's got a lot of sub genres but the main genre the house is always there and how you can relate this to um to your branding is basically uh, if you're making house music let's just say you're making house music let's just say you make mm -hmm. tech house music and tech house is your baby, you know, you, 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 you breathe it, you, 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 you live it, you know, you, you wake up to it, you go to sleep to it, blah, 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 all sorts. That's all cool. But um, how, what Jessica said as well, um, you can't really um, rely your branding onto a specific genre, even if it's been there for 30, 40 years. Your branding needs to be about you and all mm -hmm. that represents you in, in the eyes of public because that's what's going to uh, make people understand that's him or that's her or, you know, that's so-so. You know what I mean? So definitely, I believe, in my opinion as well, and I agree yeah. with you guys as well, um, your branding should be um, separate from the genre that you're in. Although you can um, combine it with the genre you are in, still, it has to be, in my opinion, at least 75% separate than the genre that you're in. Yeah, no, absolutely. Michael, what do you think? Um, I totally agree with what Sir Hat just said as well, because I feel like I've seen examples of it mm -hmm. through different people within um, hip hop and um, different genres as well. Take a guy like um, Andre 3000. Mm. Um, like you can look at him and the way he dresses isn't stereotypically someone that likes to rap or someone you would say and put the mark on him like, oh, he's a rapper. Like his yeah. dressing's far out, but you can tell like it's an individuality with him. It's his own mind. It's just like, okay, this is my style. Like I'm a person in hip hop, I'm a rapper, but this is me through and through. 
So it makes his art, um, you know, easier to take in. Yeah. And it, you know, you, you want to kind of learn to understand more as you hear and as you see kind of mm. thing. So, yeah. I think that's a really interesting point as well. It, you know, you've just, just literally said it makes you want to know more. And that that is pretty much what a brand is you should kind of know about the artist and the thing with uh music is people kind of grasp on to stories they grasp on to things that they can relate to and, and things that are personal yes to the artist but also personal to to the consumer mm -hmm. and I think that by having something that um is your own identity and, and and by building and having a brand it makes it more accessible to people because you know, for, for a brand, for example, you it could be about what you stand for. So are you trying to raise um, awareness for equality in the music industry or um, things like that? And by being able to chat about that and, and share that community and, and, and have that uh, with other people is a beautiful thing. But you have to stay consistent and you have to stay true to yourself. And we're all different. You know, we, we can all have the same interests and we can all have the same beliefs. But every single person is different. And I think that's that's something that has to come through in your music and it has to mm -hmm. come through in, in your brand as well, so. Definitely. Um, Definitely. Uh, Michael, earlier you mentioned um, Andre 3000. Have, uh, so yeah. you, know, you know the guy, you know how far he goes back. And have you, have you actually had yeah. the chance to listen to his first, first records? I'm talking... Um, a criminal, outcast, a criminal and... Um... The it, early goes, ones are. it goes way be before that. It, he was act there. There was there was actually um there was two of them, and he was actually making pure hip hop like gangster rap. He was making sorry not hip hop gangster okay. rap. He was on the streets like a real thug. He was literally repping the streets. He was making oh yeah 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 yeah. So you, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. That would have been that would have been the era when they first first came exactly. And I, first, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like as they found their feet, because mm. the South's more, how can I put it now? Because like you have New Orleans and all the, the jazz and the blues era. And I feel yeah. like as they kind of, kind of um, furthered their South with music, they incorporated them sounds from exactly. kind of where, where they're kind of based. But when they came out, it was like, yeah, gangster rap kind of, how can I, how can I put it now? It wasn't even NWA. It was just kind of like more with Gang a groove gangster rap. It know? was gangster rap. It was literally gangster rap. And but mm -hmm. obviously, even even back then, you could have seen the um, uh, the footsteps of um, where he was yeah, going yeah. to end up. Even then, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Therefore, therefore, I forgot about that actually. How they actually first came. <laughs> do, do you know? Um, I actually watched that on a um, series on Netflix. Uh, it, it, it's a series about hip hop. I forgot the actual name, but if you type hip hop documentaries on Netflix, you could see it, it you know, it starts from the very beginning of hip hop mm -hmm. up until today. So it's, it's a guy that's doing it. Um, he's done an am amazing job and I will recommend anyone mm -hmm. that is interested in hip hop um, history to go on Netflix, type um, hip hop documentary. I, I can't really remember the name. I'm sorry, but it is mm -hmm. definitely a must watch. And it's, it's, it's a really good educational um, series of documentary. Very good. I feel like some key elements of branding might be in there as well. A one hundred percent, one hundred percent. He talks about everything there, mm -hmm. everything. So Michael, yeah, I guess that kind of. Oh, sorry, okay. sir. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually passing it back to you. <laughs> um, no, it kind of brings me on to my next point, really. So let. Let's say we have an artist who is watching this uh, or listening to this podcast and they're thinking, I'm an artist. Where do I even start with branding? What would be your guys' advice on, on how to approach it and, and how to develop it as time goes on? Let's start with Jessica. Um, if I go first, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd say maybe firstly reflect inwardly and think what makes me as a person, what what do I want to show to people? And I mean, you could even incorporate your closest family and friends, people who know you the best and ask them, you know, what are, what are five words that you think of when you think of me? What kind of qualities do I have as a person? And you could incorporate that into your branding strategy. So then, you know, it's authentic and unique. Definitely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Michael, Michael, what about you? What do you think? Uh, I couldn't have said it better myself, really. I feel like it has to be a reflection of yourself and what you're about. Um, 
you got to think carefully how you want to be perceived by the general public and people that are looking into you, you know, because often how we perceive depends on how a person treats us, the way they feel about us, you know, the way they take to us. And you want to be understood in what you're trying to put across. So it's for me personally, it's about self-reflection and then going forth with that and being sure of yourself, you know. Definitely. What about you, Nicole? So I would agree with uh, both Jess and Michael. Um, it is self-reflection and, and the way you you think of yourself and your morals and your beliefs. Um, but I also think that combining that, you have to think of, you know, think of colour schemes and, and how how is that reflected? You know, let's go back to GCSE uh, English. So, you know, you could have red that represents love or does it represent danger? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and what do you want when people look at your logo or they look at your Instagram or they look at your socials, what do you want people to first initially think? Because it is all visual and it is um, kind of first impressions, I guess. And by having your morals and your beliefs and your color scheme or your tones, it all ties into one and, and that can then be reflected onto your artwork. So I would say for, for any advice, I would look at yourself as an artist, think about your beliefs and, and I do just want to say it's very easy for us to kind of say, oh, jump on uh, charities or, or find something that you believe in and be become an av ag advocate for that. But also you have to be consistent with it. So don't just watch yeah. this video and say, oh, right. Yeah. OK, so I'm going to go. I'm passionate about mental health. So I'm going to go work with a few mental health charities and, and do that for a few months. You've got to be consistent because it's more damaging to your reputation and, and your career if you're, you know, if you're not being consistent with that, you know, in a few months time, you could have an interview with BBC or whoever and, and they could ask you, oh, so what are you actively doing with this charity that you're working with? And if you've got nothing, it's, it shows that you're, you know, you're all talk really. So mm -hmm. make sure that you are passionate and you're, you're staying true to what you believe in. Use mm -hmm. colour schemes, um, use imagery um, and, and use your voice really and have fun with it. I think what Nicole brought up there as well is consistency is key across branding. I think, again, it, it shows your professionalism, but also, as I said, it's about building relationships. You've got to keep that continual, consistent trust between you as an artist and your audience. And that's how you build a relationship. That's how you build trust is through consistency. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely, definitely important. So, well, Hat, what do you think? What I think, um, I, I believe um, all of you guys pretty much talked about every single point that, you know, that had to be mentioned. Um, I'd say, um, I mean, consistency is the key in everything. That, that's mm -hmm. a fact. It, it's a it's, it's a key it's the key point in um success you could you could start 10 different businesses tomorrow all you need is your mobile phone start 10 different businesses tomorrow um go it spend the whole night creating about 100 i'm just i'm just metaphorically i'm just giving a number um spend the whole night until the morning create 100 posts for each of the business each of the businesses that's you just created okay 10 businesses 100 posts for each and makes 1,000 posts. So you are sorted for the next um, 100 days on all businesses, all right? That's that. What happens after that? If you're not carrying on after the first 100 days is done, if you're not carrying on manufacturing more posts, then what's going to happen? All the effort that you've done, all the, all, all the hours that you put in, everything is just literally going to go down a drain. And this simply mm -hmm. applies to your um, branding as well. So let's just say you actually sit down, you learn how to use Photoshop, you are shooting videos now, you're editing them on After Effects, and you put in this effect, that effect, and you, you, you know, you're using all the skills that you just learned, and everything is going nicely. But one day, comes one day, and you feel a little off. So you say, I'm just going to take today off. That's fine. It happens in every single work, uh, business. Every any, any person can go through the um through the era, and it happens to everyone. That's that's fine. Um, what happens that leads into the second day, and what happens that follows into a week, and then from there onwards it goes into a month, and then you go back to your old habits. So, mm -hmm. it, how and how I'm going to relate this to branding as well. Um. When you, when you are trying to create an online a presence, 
and um, you are using all your um, resources, your money, your time, your efforts, and then you finally come to a point where you're satisfied. But that's where most of the people actually quit. Mm-hmm. Because because they are satisfied right now, they're like, oh, you know, I'm getting good engagement. My music is getting heard. People are following me. I'm going to take a little break. And that is exactly where you make the biggest mistake of your life. Because now that you have made it to a certain point in the industry, when you decide to take a step back, do you think your followers and your fans are going to stay loyal to you? Let's just say, some of them are hardcore, die-hard die fans of your music and of you as a person. And I respect those. They will stick, all right? They will stick around. But that only consists of 20%. Mm-hmm. What about the rest 80%? They would leave. Like, they literally would leave. They will not show interest. And as you, as you um, stop being consistent... Stop recording, stop putting out new, uh, new content, stop, um, stop doing everything that you've done for, let's just say, for a whole year, all right? And then you just basically just decide to take a break and whatnot. The whole brand, the whole image that you've been putting in all that effort to create goes down a drain, and then you're going to have to start all the way from the beginning. Now, mm, yeah. this, in my opinion, nobody, nobody should do this. If you start a new, new, new journey in your life and you decided to become a guitar player or maybe a DJ or I don't know, maybe, maybe just, you know, just a pa- an artist who paints, who draws, or maybe a singer, whatever you want to do, okay? Branding applies to every single business. And if you're, if you're creating a brand around yourself, around your image as a person, you, you, you can't give long breaks. You just, mm-hmm. you just can't, you can't afford it. And that's my take on it. Yeah, Yeah. no, definitely. I I would absolutely agree. And I think um, an important point to add there would be learn, always research, because I think, you know, always educate yourself. The industry is ever changing. We've seen that, you know, you've got TikTok stars being signed who's never released a, a song, you know, and they're doing that based on their engagement, based on their following. And, um, you know, we can do TikTok as much as we like, but it is a very, very present um, platform at the minute. And, and I think musicians should absolutely be using it to their advantage as well as Instagram, um, Twitter, Facebook, all the other socials. And I think the more you educate yourself and the more you learn, because I think a lot of us stop and we, we don't do any work because of procrastination and because maybe a fear we don't know you know how to how to get to the next stage and we don't know where else to get to um and so we think oh you know rather than dealing with it i'll back off if you're always researching you're always educating yourself then that isn't going to happen and you're just going to get more and more ideas you're going to stay more creative and and want to branch out and and that's where the success is going to be you know you always have to be one step ahead of the the next person. If you, if you look at someone who's maybe five years ahead of you, let's say that, you know, they're doing tours, they're maybe doing a a UK tour or something, um, releasing every other month, uh, maybe bought out an album. You have to look at how they got there, see it as competitive analysis. How did they get there? How are you going to get there? And from you know, if they're here, how are you going to get five years ahead of them? Um, and I think that's really important within the industry um, t- to remember, really, and, and just in, in life generally. So, 100%. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, but what I was going to say, um, so we talked about branding. Um, we've gone in real, real details in depth. We had a good conversation. Um, what would you give uh, the upcoming artist as an advice? What would you advise the upcoming artists um, to be able to stay relevant, not just mm-hmm. with their music, with their branding, but at the same time with the technology that's coming up every single day? What would your recommendations be? Let's start with Michael. I feel like learning. Learning is a key point. Um, to be able to move with the times as technology is advancing at a rapid rate uh, there's going to be things that come out and you know different apps and certain things that you're going to look at and think oh, okay I don't know how to do this and you're just going to stop yourself there 
but that could be the key element. That could be literally make or break. So don't ever stop learning. Don't ever stop trying to improve. Um, always go above and beyond for yourself, really, because at the end of the day, if you're not taking yourself seriously, then I don't think anyone else is, is going to really, and that's going to come across within um, everything you do. So, yeah. yeah, definitely don't stop learning or don't stop trying. Mm -hmm. Jess, Jess, what about you? Um, I completely agree with Michael. I think even in terms of anything in life, education is definitely key and not just education to a certain point like, oh, I've educated myself through school and as soon as I hit 18, that's when I stop learning. You will never progress in life and you'll never keep up with trends. I think you've got to use your time wisely. Those three hours where you spend, I don't know, watching Netflix at night, someone else is learning how to use a new software program and mm -hmm. somebody else is ahead of you and not to promote the whole burnout culture because obviously you've got to take care of yourself and give yourself breaks when you need them but I, I think you've just got to be conscious that other people are going above and beyond what you're currently doing and it all starts with education definitely what about okay. you Nicole what do you think uh yeah I think I would agree with uh what the what the other guys have said it's it's about pushing yourself to the limit and then pushing yourself a bit more. Um, mm -hmm. I would say, of course, look after yourself, um, be kind to yourself, have that lazy Sunday if you need it, but always make sure that you are pushing yourself in and being the best you can be. That is, that is correct. Definitely correct. Um, I, I, I sometimes personally go through those moments as well. And I'm not going to lie. Today was one, you know, uh, I've, 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 I felt a little less motivated than usual. So I took a little little bit of break and i i spend some time time on myself i pumped with myself a little bit i'm not gonna lie but then you know <laughs> it's the truth i'm not gonna lie but um when it was six o'clock i was like well six o'clock cyprus time obviously not england time so mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's it hit six o'clock and i was like all right an hour and a half that's it and i, I literally all of a sudden I, I got pumped because i was really really looking forward to doing this podcast with you guys because it's the second time we're doing it but i'm absolutely loving it and great idea you know, thank you guys for joining. Amazing. Seriously amazing. <laughs> no, thank you everybody for joining. It's, <laughs> it's been really fun yeah, and, and great to hear everybody's um, outlook. And, and we all have, I think I said in the first podcast, we all have different strengths. We all have different weaknesses. We all have different experiences. And, and it's great that we're able to come here and, and share them with each other, but also share them with um, upcoming musicians who are, who are wanting to be the best that they can be so mm -hmm. uh no i really really appreciate your time thank you very much everybody um and to everybody watching uh please do go like and subscribe and if you do have any ideas for future podcasts that you want us to do then just leave it in the comments below and we will make sure that we'll cover it and we'll do our research if we're not sure and we'll make sure we give you guys the best co content so yeah thank you very much and if anyone's got anything to add go ahead i'm fine no thank you <laughs> thanks for watching guys yeah thanks for watching all right um don't forget to like